Um, is it fair to say that Hamas's actions on the 7th of October has positively changed the narrative of the Palestinian cause um, and the way it's viewed by governments around the world and in Australia? Maha. Well, I'm not sure I would use the word positive, but what I would say about this is that um, the opposition leader, Peter Dutton, said something very telling, I thought, the other day. He said that there was peace on October the 6th. Now, on one level, that's palpable nonsense. The fact is that 2023 was on the West Bank, which is not the place that is being uh, bombarded now, was the most violent year since 2005, since the end of the Second Intifada, um, for Palestinians. Hundreds of Palestinians were killed. Uh, 80 children were killed on the West Bank in 2023. So it was a lethal year. There was no peace on October the 6th. So on one level, it's nonsense, as I said. But on another level, on the crude level of uh, power and of the political and media class, the fact is that all those dark Palestinians dying wasn't news. It didn't ripple the surface. It didn't disturb the surface of, of the water. Hamas understood, for better or worse, what would create a disturbance, what would disturb the surface, and that was the death of large numbers of Israelis. And so that's what they did. Um, um, they did something that couldn't be ignored because the deaths of Israelis count and the deaths of Arabs don't count. Um, and they upended Israeli assumptions about the fact, the idea that the conflict could be managed. So they created, they certainly created a situation where the Palestinians and their situation couldn't be ignored. But whether that was, uh, and, and from that point of view, I suppose some Palestinians would say it's a positive thing. But I have to say the price that the Palestinians have paid for the decision that Hamas made is so terribly high that I can't use the word positively. Yeah, I was about to go to that because, yeah, I mean, Julian, the death toll for Palestinians has been incredibly high. Um, I was just going to add on that Jake Sullivan, the uh, US National Security Advisor, had written this piece looking at the world uh, that was supposed to go out in foreign affairs later in October. In it, he said, well... The uh, Middle East is relatively stable, uh, and now we can pivot over and mm. to, to Asia, this long-desired pivot to confront uh, China, and they had to edit that out after the 7th of October so he wouldn't look you know, completely blinded. But it, it is a blindness uh, in the US policy class. They just do not see Palestinians. No. Uh, and until... They started dying in such terrible numbers. The Palestinian deaths were invisible and it was seen as peace. Yeah. This is part of the issue, though, isn't it, that um, October the 7th, um, which was such a horrendous day for Israelis, the mass murder of, you know, so many people, but those young people at that music festival are seared in my memory, <laughs> you know, people going out, young people, to have a joyful experience mm -hmm. um, in, in incredible numbers. It changed everything. It changed the psyche in Israel and it's clearly changed uh, the course of this, this war, right? It's, it's made everything different. It is a definitive moment like I don't think I've seen in my lifetime in this war. So I suppose the question is uh, Hamas, in some ways, through all of this discussion we're having is being rewarded, is it not, for changing the discourse? In what way is it being rewarded? That's the argument, that they are getting... All of... They are getting their issues debated like But they're not before. their issues. They don't belong to Hamas. They belong to the whole Palestinian people. The Hama <laughs> Hamas... Hamas are the... Hamas are the ones who are uh, 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 willing to fight um, and willing to attack and willing to kill people uh, to make their point. But what I would say is, and this is, uh, I mean this most sincerely, I hear people here say all lives matter and I hear people say that they cringe and they recoil when they see the violence of the Israeli state in, in Gaza. But I have to say, I don't hear anybody who's willing to stand up and fight for the Palestinians. I don't hear anybody who's willing to put their political or their um, economic cred uh, credentials on the line to save Palestinian lives. Uh, if you leave a vacuum where you're not fighting for the Palestinians, yes, Hamas are going to fill that vacuum every single day of the week. Mm. And that's, and that's the, the tragedy. The tragedy is that you have left the field 
uh, as an international community to Hamas. Um, if you don't want Hamas in the centre of the field, take the centre of the field. Mm. Fight for the Palestinians. A powerfully expressed point. Uh, I, I could see you trying to get in there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of change and po possible changes of the narrative, I, I cannot believe that uh, it was all the talk about, about what is going on. Uh, we're still conflating Hamas and Palestinian mm. civilians, mm -hmm. which is kind of logical fallacy that is deployed by pur purposefully, I, I imagine, by governments whenever they need to make this point. So I think if we are still not distinguishing between Hamas and Palestinian civilians and also between Israeli state, the state of Israel and Jewish people elsewhere, and then every, uh, every criticism of Jewish state suddenly becomes anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. as if you forget that there are so many Jewish people, including myself, who do not support uh, what the state of Israel is doing. Mm -hmm. Then, so even if we, if we are still committing so easily this, this very simple logical mistake, I don't know if the narrative has really mm. improved. Mm. Um,